Hello, this is a review for my newly arrived Devil's Charge. Uh, this is the latest book from Flames of War. It is the first real book for the Battle of the Bulge. Yes, I know Blood, Guts, and Glory came out, but it's technically not the Battle of the Bulge. It's just a precursor to it. Uh, so here is my review of Devil's Charge. Now, it's a soft-covered book. And I'm going to start off with the negatives first, because I always like the bad news first, so I'm just going to give you the bad news first. It's $30, but it is the same size as the old $25, things like Hell's Highway or De Dogs and Devils and so forth. Um, it's 84 pages, whereas the others were 80 pages, so you do get a couple extra pages, but not, um, not the standard that Battlefront has been doing. They went to $40.00 because of Blood, Guts, and Glory, and Casino, and which I assumed were uh, because they came with the Infantry Aces rules and the Tank Aces, which are really great ideas. Uh, I, I enjoyed them immensely and made the, the books completely worth it for $30, uh, even though it's soft-covered and doesn't have the kind of list that you see in a hardcover um, book that you get. Usually the soft-cover, they'll give you a little extra rules, little uh, extra things to work on. Casino and Blood, Guts, and Glory did that in spades, and I thought they were terrific books. Now, um, because of that, I, I can't give it a, a, a superior rating because it just, it, the only thing that it comes extra with are the winter weather rules. They give you some ideas of what to do. Basically, if you and your opponent say, hey, you know what, let's play a winter game, and we both agree on it, you play it. It's not necessarily for a tournament. It's just some ideas to have fun with uh, between you and your buddy that are playing. So, and they were they're great ideas. I really like them. Uh, that being said, the uh, amount of lists in here are good. You've got uh, seven lists, total lists, and many variations. Uh, they have done something that I thought was a really good idea. I had a problem with, let's say, D-Day. They had a uh, the, the 1st and the 29th division, and I'm thinking to myself, hey, what about Utah Beach? What happened to the 4th, the 9th, the 90th, all these other things? And basically they said online, if you want to play the 4th, you just play the 29th. If you want the, the uh, 9th, you play the 1st. Um, but it is buried in, in, the webs, in the webpage. Here they don't bury it. They did a great job of saying, hey, look, if you want to be, uh, for instance, let me just find it real quick. If you want to be the 99th Infantry Battalion, you get these special rules and you just follow the 2nd uh, Division when building the army. Okay, Let me start from the beginning before I lose my place. Uh, standard quality that you expect from Battlefront. They did a great job in putting together the history, showing you what happened. Uh, really good learning material. The um, Special rules, lots of good flavor for each of the um, the companies that you'll be doing. Kampf Group Piper basically, you know, takes away the Allied rules. All these guys work together. All the Germans are actually Germans in this. And uh, it says here, Piper's Charge, you may elect to, uh, to use the always attack. So you don't have to always attack, but you can if you want to. So it's really up to you. And, and with the uh, forces that you get here, you probably do want it. If you want to add... Piper himself, he gives you basically the um, the uh, everybody march, you know, that you get to reroll reserves, and uh, if you have scatter reserves, you can reroll where they come in, which is which is really handy, but a little overpriced here. Now, Camp Group Piper, this is the main thrusting force of your your uh, your army. I love it. I think it's a terrific force, not necessarily for the Panzers. But for the Panthers and the Koenigstiger, when you've got fearless train, that's exactly what you want because you don't care if they hit you because your Panthers and your, your, your Tiger Twos are strong enough to handle it. But they don't have the, um, uh, the protected ammo, so you want that fearless in there. So this is a much better list uh, as you get bigger than, say, Blood, Guts, and Glory. Blood, Guts, and Glory was basically the German... Um, was for the smaller games. You know, you'd, you'll dominate in the smaller games because you get so many Panthers uh, for real cheap, but they don't really fight that well. Here you got the fearless tag on them so that they can jump back into their tanks uh, when they get bailed out. Presumably that's the worst thing that'll happen. But uh, they can choose the three main tanks, Panzer IV Js, P 
Panther G's and the Konigs Tigers with the Henschel. And uh, their force is pretty standard. Another thing I like is that they get a little bit of air support and they get the Messerschmitts 262's I believe which cannot be intercepted otherwise they're kind of like mini Stukas. They're, they're not, their firepower isn't a 1, it's a 2. Uh, basically early war Stukas that can't be intercepted which is nice. Um, and there's the, the rules of high speed jet, they're 105 points. Otherwise they get uh, some cool things um, the normal artillery, they're, they're very well equipped uh, so they can handle pretty much anything. Now what they can do, and did I skip it? No, nope, it's over here. They can get these guys over here which are basically just, they dress up as Americans, they change road signs, they get these special rules that once per turn they get to move after your opponent moves and they can move into position and then they can spread rumors, observe defense, which basically makes them recon uh, reverse road signs, which delays um, reserves, which is really good if you're you're always attacking and you want to stop a defender's reserves from coming in. Uh, spread rumors. That's basically to automatic. You know, you can pin them down, and you have to make a skill check to do this. Now they can expose you, which um, the enemy team says that you know they get a command team within a certain distance. It's either four or um, it's six inches, and they do a skill check. And if they succeed the skill check. Uh, let's see. Now the commando team does the skill check, and if they're successful, they uh, they're good to go. If not, they're exposed and they're they're gone from the game. Now you can get 50 points for one of them, 100 points for two of them. I believe I, I can't. I didn't see in the rules if they can go off their separate ways. I assume they can, but uh, I have to check the double check on that. The second list is a can, the uh, Panzer Grenade Kampf Group. This is basically these guys right here. They pretend to be Americans and they sneak in. If you're familiar with the Eastern Front, you, the Russians, what they've been doing to Germans, now the Germans can do to the Americans. So uh, they can come in, uh, as long as they don't fire, uh, the Americans have to do a skill check to identify them. And if they do, they can shoot at them. If not, they can't shoot at them. So that's, it's really good for getting in for a nice, good, close shot and uh, blowing up guys with an alpha strike. Um, the list itself is pretty standard. You've got your Panthers, you've got your uh, your Stugs that you can hide in there, and then some American troops. So, and that's basically it for the Germans. The Germans have those two lists, and you got some painting guides, of course, some cool pictures. And then they go into uh, the Bloody Buck guys, the 28th Division. Um, they get a nice rule here at all costs, all platoons. Of perimeter outposts start the game in prepared positions even if missions do not have prepared positions. Uh, so they're dug in automatically and they get to reroll failed attempts to dig in. They are reluctant train. First time I've seen that for Americans where the reluctant, I mean, not reluctant train, reluctant veteran. So you got reluctant here which means you got veteran troops that are cheaper and uh, they're dug in so they're going to be hard to blow up anyway and get them running but they are reluctant so they will run. Um, they have a lot of fortifications. Anybody who has a lot of fortifications in your arsenal, you're going to love these lists. Look at the amount of fortifications that you can have. The main list, you have a for you're required to have fortification. And these, these outposts here, they've got a lot of fortifications already built into them that you can get more and more things, barbed wire and so forth. So a lot of fortifications. You do get some tank support if you want to. Lots of artillery. Uh, this is something that's happening that's new. Uh, air support and AOP take up a slot, so you can only choose one of them. And that's been happening lately, which is uh, kind of mildly annoying. And here's what I was talking about where you know you could be a 4th infantry division. All you have to do is just take the 28th and just say you're the 4th. And you know it's a minor thing, but it was something that was bothering me. So um, I'm glad they did that. I really like that they put in the book, not just on the website. It seemed like a second, you know, an afterthought. Here they really, you know, they go into the history of the 4th Infantry Division, talk about it. So, um, you know, if your, your grandfather or great-grandfather fought in the war and he was in a particular division, now you can use really say that I'm using the rules here for that division. <clears throat> you go into the Indian of the 2nd Infantry Division. Again here, 1st Infantry Division and 30th Infantry Division just use the 2nd Infantry. Uh, so I really like that. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, and then they got the the 99th uh, Infantry Division, and here you could be the 106th Infantry Division. It's the same thing they say. 
And then this one, the 99th Infantry Battalion, is almost like the second. Uh, this can be a little confusing. I got a little confused about this. The uh, second Infantry Division is, um, they have these special rules. The 99th Infantry has these rules. But the, if you take the 99th Infantry Battalion, it's not the division, if you take the battalion, it's the same as this, except you don't get these two rules, you get these two rules. Okay, that's how I read the rules. It's not that you get the second and this, you just get this instead of this. But otherwise, it's the same. You use the same uh, force chart where you use the second infantry division and how much they cost. And that'll be 99th Infantry Battalion. Uh, I thought that was a little confusing, but uh, it's pretty straightforward if you read it properly. Then they got Audie Murphy. He's an awesome guy has a lot of cool abilities, and he can be deployed as a bunker slash uh, objective marker. So you take off, if you have, you have to have the objectives, you can't just make one up. You take one of your objectives off the board, place it, you know, somewhere else, and it turns into a machine gun bunker that he's in charge of, and he can call in artillery and so forth, so, but if it gets blown up, it turns into a regular objective, okay? Uh, the rifle companies. You got confident vet, confident trained, lots and lots of options. This is my kind of list where you can have all this artillery. You can even have German anti tank guns, just tons of stuff. Um, you can even have, um, you know, your tank destroyers, tank platoons. Uh, they do a really good job. They have a roadblock strong point, even road, roadblock strong point. So you do have your fortifications. Uh, the only thing missing here is the 88s. That's the only thing that I don't see in there. Um, so I was, you know, mildly disappointed, but you get everything else. And then you got your, your engineer battalion. They get these rules here. Everybody pretty much gets why we fight, which is basically bulldog against uh, SS formations, uh, which is real handy because they're fearless. So uh, you, you don't, you're not really too worried about the others that are confident, but the fearless ones you're worried about. Um, and they have a lot of things that you can do. They have, of course, their equipment that you can add on to. But then they have these uh, fortifications on page 61 where you can get all this stuff added on to to help you defend the uh, position. Then you get into the cavalry. You've got the recon. And basically the light tank company is the same except it's reversed for the recon. And you have... And for the first time, we get to see chaff chaffies. Chaffies are basically a, a hybrid between an old, um, an old uh, uh, Sherman and a Stuart. Same capabilities of a Stuart with a Sherman gun on it. Uh, so that, that's something that's really nice. Oh, yeah, and it uh, looks like somebody took a bite out of it. I don't know whose fault that is or the person that sent it to me or uh, Battlefront, but that was just weird. Um, and that's it. That's that's basically you get a ni really nice uh, list. If you are an infant American infantry player, they've got all these things that you can do. Poor, uh, yeah, that thing is now basically an objective. I don't know what they're doing with that. Um, some nice winter rules, but it is a is a, I would say if it was twenty five dollars, it is the best twenty five dollar book um, of the three. Uh, $30 books, it, well, the lists are terrific. If, if you're just about the lists and, um, you know, the history of it, Devil's Charge does a great job, at least as good as any other book, and uh, the lists are terrific. I really like the, the uh, spread of the list, the uh, capabilities, all the special things that each, uh, each division can do, a lot of uh, flavor in them so that you really feel like they're different. And I really appreciate it. I wish Battlefront would do more of that, and I think they are. So I, I'm very pleased about that. I just wish they had something a little extra, maybe a little uh, mini campaign for Battle of the Bulge in the back, kind of like what they did. with. The only thing I wish, that they had um, something in the back, like a Battle of the Bulge campaign, much like they had campaigns for these two $30 books. They didn't have it for this, and they still charge you 30 That's the only bad thing I could say about it. Otherwise, it's a terrific book. Uh, must uh, must get for uh, American infantry goers and people that are setting up Battle of the Bulge.